if I apologize if this is taking a little bit. Hang on a sec. Um, okay. Okay. All right. Recorder is on. All right. Um, welcome back, everyone, to EasyHorseTraining.com. This is Annabelle Cabella, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Bob Miller. Um, his website is RobertMMiller.com, and he is just a jack of all trades. He's a cartoonist, um, a doctor, obviously, and he's a phenomenal horseman as well. So without further ado, Dr. Bob, I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Okay. Uh, I'm a veterinarian, uh, retired many years now from practice and uh, very heavily involved in a second career, a basically unplanned second career. It just happened. Uh, I'm teaching. Uh, I'm on the lecture circuit and uh, travel all over the world uh, teaching uh, the science and art and science of horsemanship and um, teaching uh, equine behavior, the principles of it. I've done a bunch of books and videos on that subject and on some other subjects as well. So uh, I'm as busy as I was when I was in practice. I just don't have to get up in the middle of the night to deliver foals anymore. Well, it sounds like you really thrive on that. <laughs> You, uh, you're, you're pretty unique in your ability to blend art and, and horsemanship and science all together. I mean, it's commonplace for those of us who work with horses to see that all of those elements are, are, are there well, and um, present in horsemanship. But tell me a little bit how you came to, to, to meld the, the three so nicely together. Well, uh, you brought up uh, something that's interesting. Us in 2010... Uh, I published a book called The Passion for Horsemanship uh, and Artistic Talent. The subtitle is uh, An Unrecognized Connection. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't really recognize it myself until I started to work on this book, which uh, originally was a book about why so many people I've known in my lifetime have switched from a successful career unrelated to horses and sometime in midlife their love of horses causes them to abandon this career and go into some aspect of the horse industry. Uh, and uh, the ones I know have usually been successful uh, at that. They may not make as much money, but uh, they, they seem to be happier. Uh, that was the original theme of the book. But as I interviewed people, I found out that every one of them was an artist. They either uh, draw or paint or sculpt or they're musicians. And, um, I finally uh, realized that there's a genetic connection, and it helped me to understand myself. Now, mind you, I was when this book was published, I started writing it at 83 years of age. So uh, I finally came to understand myself because uh, uh, I've been a, uh, an artist all my life. Uh, cartooning is an art form, they tell me, uh, and I've been doing that since I was in a high chair. So... Uh, the book helped me to understand myself, and I know it will help a lot of people who have this passion for horses and all artistic talent realize there's a connection between them. I don't believe it's ever been described before, although historically there are so many people from Leonardo da Vinci, the Remington Russell, who are great artists and also uh, uh, had this great love for the horse. Yeah, it's really cool. Did you do the illustration on the cover of this book? I'm looking at it right now on your website, The Passion for Horses and Artistic Talent. No, I did not. Well, it's, it looks like a really great book. I'm going to go buy it myself when we're off the phone because you're right. There's not a whole lot of information out there about this connection, and, and it's very real. And I think that it'll probably be something that um, people are much more aware of in, in the future. Yes, uh I think it uh, was overdue for recognition. I think, uh, you know, I think you can go back to the caves in France uh, thousands of years ago and look at the drawings and uh, realize that there were people then that had uh, the talent and were tracked at the horses, which back then only served as a food source. But we still have always had a unique connection to them, I feel like, right back to Xenophon. And, and I was fortunate enough to come across a book that he wrote um, in the 1400s about uh, war and horsemanship and about the process that he goes through to choose a war horse. And it's so intricate. Mm -hmm. And you can just hear, even in, 
in a writing that may not be as familiar to us now as it was then to, to the people, I'm sure. But you can hear like his interest and his intrigue with the horse and the connection. It's so much more than just, I'm going to use this horse as a tool. 